What's going on everybody? This is Jack Acid bringing you the uh, first of a mini-series I'm doing, taking you through the F1 2012 Season Challenge Mode, and uh, going to be starting off here on hard, joining the Caterham team, working our way from the bottom, and uh, I am still intending on doing a Career Mode series, but I uh, want to spend a little bit of time with the game before I get knee-deep into that, and let's face it, the Career Mode is uh, pretty long and uh, it's pretty time consuming so thought this might be a nice little filler and let's face it it's a uh, new mode within the franchise so that makes it uh, pretty compelling so uh, gonna start off here kinda of scan through my email the objective in this mode is that uh, we're gonna be selecting a rival of choice and uh, trying to beat them in uh, at least two races and if we are able to do so we're able to take their seat for the next couple of races so gonna be targeting Jean-Eric Verne here with Toro Rosso who's ranked about four or five spots up from me and I'm hoping to beat him here at the first race of the season at Monza and gonna take you through just uh, a portion of the qualifying lap here and the objective in qualifying in the season challenge mode is basically a single one-shot hot lap and you can see here that I'm chasing down Hamilton, who's the current pole position leader, and get it all wrong here. And that would be the story of my lap. Definitely going to cost me, not to mention the fact that I'm in a uh, Caterham versus Hamilton's McLaren. So now coming up to the end of uh, the qualifying lap, let's see what kind of time we can do. Here come the times rolling in, currently running 19th. And then at the last moment, Kovalainen, my teammate, qualifies ahead of me. And you can see just how small of a difference that was, uh, about two tenths of a second. So now skipping ahead to the race, and we will be starting off in 20th position. And uh, Jean-Eric Verne is going to be starting ahead of us. And you can see that in Season Challenge mode, all we have to do is beat our rival. We don't have to concern ourselves with a team objective per se. There are still team objectives for qualifying and the race, but uh, they're just not really an issue. Your uh, primary objective is to beat your rival. And of course you're still trying to score points and uh, win the championship, it's just that there are no repercussions of uh, failing a team objective, there's no experience points or anything of that nature. So uh, in that way we are less concerned in this mode. So uh, Jean-Eric Verne has qualified 15th, that's five spots ahead of me. And it's kind of a crapshoot when you select a rival in terms of uh, how well you're going to be able to uh, compete with them. Uh, I just kind of went by the eyeball test thinking, you know, four or five spots up, you know, Toro Rosso is a, uh, you know, sort of a lower mid-tier team and would be a nice transition from Caterham. And uh, from uh, Toro Rosso, maybe you start looking at a team like Lotus or Mercedes and so forth. So here we are to start all the way back in the back of the grid and you can see that I'm chasing down uh, my teammate and don't have very good pace here off the line and now coming into the field and barely able to slow down in time and uh, not make any heavy contact. You can see a little bit of contact there with Bruno Senna. Now wheel to wheel with Vern on the left hand side and we were able to stay ahead and shoot in front of Senna now and now Raikkonen and now Grosjean falls behind as I almost go off the track on the left hand side and we are able to get up into P12 coming into this uh, hard breaking point. Don't want to slam into the back of anybody and uh, now trying to share this chicane with uh, Maldonado in the Williams tight fit but able to get ahead of him and so now trying to chase down Rosberg and the Mercedes and you have to feel like this might be a little bit of a mirage as uh, you can see the train of cars piling up behind me and again I'm not super uh, versed on the new control scheme yet this is uh, only a handful of hours into uh, getting it and uh, spending a lot of time on different modes so uh, not even sure what my pace is going to be uh, the only time I've really spent with it was making my uh, review of the game, which of course uh, you can find on my channel if you're interested. It's a pretty lengthy uh, inside look, about 21 minutes long, and you can find the link to that video in the description here. So now trying to uh, stay ahead of the Williams on the very long straight, dropping it into fourth gear here and trying to hold an inside position. You can see Maldonado not getting aggressive. And uh, now as I go a little bit wide there, coming into the uh, end of lap one, and currently running in P11 so we are well ahead of uh, Jean-Eric Verne for now and you can see that uh, Maldonado is thinking about having a look but uh, decides not to make any kind of a move slowing down to the chicane and I have noticed that this chicane is a lot easier for me to hit 
in F1 2012 than it was in 2011. Seems like the braking is more responsive. The car feels a little more stable under braking. Um, I, I have noticed some improvements in terms of my ability to play it in areas where I normally would struggle, but of course that doesn't make the game easy. As you can see, I clipped the chicane there, and I've had a couple spin-outs there uh, in my time at Monza, so uh, this game can be unforgiving uh, depending on uh, how well you're managing your throttle and so forth. And you can see now Grosjean has overtaken Maldonado, and he's now having a look on the outside, on the right-hand side, and of course I'm leaving him room to get by me. He definitely has the pace over me. And now Maldonado also trying to get in on the action. Let's see if we can get around Grosjean here. And not able to do so. In fact, pushed off just a little bit, but able to uh, get my place back on the track and stay ahead of the Williams. But uh, you have to feel like it's only a matter of time before he gets around me. And now along this main straight, and of course I am using Kurz uh, throughout this, uh, able to stay ahead of Maldonado. And so uh, now with just over uh, three laps to go, holding a pretty good position here in 12th, and uh, if you look at the mini-map, you can see a uh, train of cars, and what you want to be concerned with is the, uh, I believe it's the little blue icon represents the your rival. So that's who you want to be keeping track of. I believe there's an orange icon for your teammate, as you can see, trying to uh, get around Grosjean and almost go into the sand, but able to save the car and maintain position. I have noticed in this particular part of the track, the uh, chicane that we just went through and right through here, usually the AI is a little bit slower. So uh, there do seem to be parts of the track, at least at Monza, where the AI is slow. As you can see, uh, thought about uh, getting aggressive after Grosjean. Also, mishandling that chicane again. And uh, a lot of it has to do with just reaction of trying to make a split-second decision if you want to try and have a go. Uh, but now you can see Grosjean is pulling well ahead. And honestly, probably should have been more aggressive there. But uh, again, because I'm just trying to stay ahead of uh, the Toro Rosso, I'm not too concerned about situations like this as Maldonado just zips right on by. And let's see if we can catch him at the uh, breaking point. And Raikkonen now following behind, surprisingly, in 14th position. Not sure what happened to Kimi, but he's struggling here. And uh, now it's going to become a matter of trying to fend him off. I believe he is the only car that separates me from Jean-Eric Verne, so I'd like to keep it that way. And for some reason, Raikkonen has uh, fallen way back along that straight. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But you can see as we come around the uh, final turn here that he's able to uh, collect himself and get right back on me. And definitely going to uh, struggle to... Uh, stay ahead of him here. This is a DRS zone, but because we're chasing down Maldonado here, we are able to use our DRS and negate that, but now getting our breaking point all wrong, heading into the chicane, and surprisingly, no warning from the stewards about an illegal overtake, now giving Maldonado room on the uh, right-hand side, now he yields and falls back. And uh, I do know that in uh, this game, if you do an illegal overtake, there's a little countdown ticker that would normally appear. And uh, it would basically give you a handful of seconds, somewhere between four and six seconds, to relinquish your position back to whoever you uh, illegally overtook. But uh, I guess in this instance, the stewards deem that a legal maneuver, albeit completely ugly. And actually, now that I think about it, I guess I overtook him well before the uh, incident at the chicane. But uh, if anything, that might have been a corner-cutting warning, some kind of a warning from the stewards. Uh, for that kind of ugliness. And now you can see that uh, Raikkonen is using his DRS to try and get by me, and even though he's got the speed, not able to uh, take advantage. And uh, through all my blathering, I failed to mention that uh, Raikkonen and Maldonado are trading P13 back and forth, back and forth. In fact, Maldonado's now back ahead of Raikkonen. So as we uh, near the end of lap four, heading into the final lap of the race, it's going to be a question of who it is that I'll be competing with. And I'm not going to be overly worried about it as long as uh, I'm able to stay ahead of the Toro Rosso. Now uh, Maldonado having a look on the outside. And you can see that he's not able to get around me. And I do not have a DRS advantage, but Maldonado does. So now uh, let's see if we can handle the breaking point better than we did before and see if we can get ahead of him. And we are able to get around and much cleaner this time. Able to get the position right back. And uh, something I failed to mention at the beginning of the uh, video, and it's listed in the description, but uh, we are racing with no assist with manual transmission. Oh, excuse me. I do have uh, traction control enabled. 
And uh, I think that might be the big difference between F1 2011 and 12 is that the uh, throttle and braking using the 360 controller, which is what I'm using here, uh, there seems to be a broader scope or a broader range of responsiveness and it actually really helps with uh, braking and uh, your throttle. So my hope is that uh, as time goes on and I become more comfortable with the game that uh, I will have an opportunity to start removing assists like traction control which is the last assist on my to-do list. As you can see Maldonado speeds right by me here through the last DRS zone of the race and struggling here at Ascari and that's probably going to cost me any chance of uh, getting back up with uh, the Williams but now you can see Raikkonen isn't through he's uh, having a go on the outside here and now wheel the wheel with the Lotus and as we head into the uh, Parabolica the last corner of the uh, circuit let's see what we can do when there's very slight contact with the Lotus and this is going to come down to wheel the wheel able to shift up into fifth and now sixth and we're able to get P13 by a nose so very exciting finish there and you can see Raikkonen and uh, Bruno Senna were very keen to get around me at the last second but able to fend them off and I believe there was even a Force India car there uh, taking a quick look at the results let's see yes there was a uh, Paul DeResta was also right there so very spirited in the middle of the grid but uh, the all-important uh, beating our rival uh, has taken place and we were able to do so so now we're gonna be able to move on to Spa and if we are able to beat Jean-Eric Verne there, we will have an opportunity to race for Toro Rosso for the next handful of races or until we beat our next rival. So I'm going to leave you guys here with just a uh, short highlight clip. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching. It uh, feels very, very good to be uh, starting off on a fresh series. Very excited about it. And I uh, hope you guys will stick with me as I get through these 10 races. Feel free to check out my channel. I've got a number of uh, Forza 4 commentary videos posted, uh, a number of those actually, as well as my F1 2011 series, which I know isn't quite as exciting, but hey, at least it's a uh, full complete season if you're interested in more F1 commentary. So hope to see you guys at the next one. Thanks again.